Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, we're going to be going over the new units coming over, uh, coming with the Princess Connect uh, collab that we're going to be having. Uh, we have three new units to talk about. Uh, Pekorian? Forger Masuba and Lumiere Pandora. Uh, the one unit that I can't talk about is um, Forger Cleo, who's going to be the free-to-play unit, but she's also coming with this event. So that's going to be today's video. Uh, if you end up liking this video, you can always leave a like, comment, tell me about how you're feeling about these units, if you're going to be summoning, all that good stuff. And um, subscribe to me if you want some more Dragalia Lost stuff. I also cover a whole bunch of other games and play stuff for fun. So, uh, before we start, I should, there's two things that you need to know about this banner. One, it is a, uh, prize showcase, which is nice. And two, it is not limited. So, um, usually in Dragalia Lost, a lot of, um, collabs are limited, like Mega Man, Monster Hunter, Fire Emblem Heroes, all of them are limited. Um, the only one that's not limited is, uh, <laughs> Princess Connect for whatever reason. Um... Probably because it's owned by Psy Games, so they didn't feel the need to be like, uh, we give, we give, uh, permanent permission or something like that. Um, so, if you definitely want to skip this banner, if you're a big fan of Princess Connect, you should 100% be summoning, because you are not going to get a better chance of pulling specifically, um, the princess here. Um... Because even though she's not limited, uh, she does get, she is going to get lost in that big old banner. It's going to be extremely hard to actually pull her. Um, so this is your best chance of getting her. But of course, if you're not the biggest fan of the princess, I do want to remind you, near the end of the year, December, uh, we should be getting Dragon Yule. Uh, we should be getting the rerun of the previous banner. A new Dragon Yule. And also the New Year's banner limited units. Um... A brand new uh, New Year's limited units, I should say. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind as we talk about these. Especially with Dragalia kind of being a little bit more stingy with its tickets and stuff. Alright, that's enough foreshadowing. Let's get into the actual units now. As you can, Oh, this is the prize school, by the way. If you get a Platinum prize, you get a Sunlight Stone, Damascus Ingot, uh, or the other Ignit. Gold prize gives you a Sunlight Ore, um, a Champion's Testament, or Golden Key. Silver prize, that, and then there's another prize here. Um, I think this you loses a lot of value when there's no free summons, and that's how I feel about it. All right, let's go. Pecorin, however you pronounce her name, forgive, forgive me if I'm not saying it right. The leader of a group called the Gourmet Guild who hails from the continent of Australia. She is known far and wide for her ravenous appetite, and coming to another world has done nothing to dampen her hunger. Alright. Princess Strike deals light damage to the enemy directly ahead and reduces shadow damage taken by the user by 10% for 10 seconds. This damage reduction effect will not stack. This skill is used after the user's Gourmet Gauge has filled. A variant called the Princess of Valiance will be used instead. Princess of Valiance deals light damage to the enemies directly ahead and increases the user's strength by 40% for 5 seconds. Once the Gourmet Gauge is depleted, this skill will revert to its initial effect. Okay. Lunchtime increases the user's defense by 15% for 15 seconds. Restores HP to the user and partially fills the user's gourm Gourmet Gauge. Uh, Dragon Haze 15%. Chain Co-op ability light HP... 60% equals strength, 60%. Perpetually Peckish Pecorin 2. Um, grant the user a Gorman Gauge. Gorman Gauge? Uh, Gorman Gauge um, fills when the user's second skill is used. When the gauge is completely filled, it grants the user a unique force strike and begins gradually depleting. Begins to gradually deplete. The user's second skill will not fill the Gorman gauge while it is being depleted, but once it is depleted, the user's force strike will revert to its initial effect. Curse resistance 100%. Food is the source of all life, too. The user's strength is increased by 20% for 10 seconds. When their HP is restored after activation, this ability will not activate again for 20 seconds. So that is the princess. Um, I should... So, she's not doing herself any favors by being a light sword. Um, the Gala Prince is kind of your go-to Gala Sword in just about any situation, really. Um, not everyone, I guess, has that limited unit, though. So, uh, it will make it so that I think if you want to use both of them together, it is kind of a pain in the butt, though. Something to kind of keep in mind. 
Other than that, I don't know. She seems... Okay, like, nothing about her kit specifically is, like, speaking out to me as, like, game-breaking. But at the same time, nothing about it is actually speaking bad to me. Like, it also seems like she seems she would be a fun unit to use. Which I think at a certain point, some people would rather have the fun unit over the, um... Um, over the extremely good unit or something like that. I mean, not that they can't be both. It's not mutually exclusive after all. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel about her at the moment. Just like looking at it, it's kind of tough. Like, um, we kind of need information on our mods. We don't have any idea of that. So here's the one thing. What makes the difference between a good unit and a bad unit? It's their damage mods. Um, like she, she like in theory she could have the most plainest set of skills in the world and it wouldn't matter if her damage mods were just so insanely good that it like broke the sound barrier and it didn't matter because then at that point she would just be one of the best units through sheer force of will at that point um so that's something we have to kind of wait and see with specifically but i don't know she seems fine she seems perfectly fine for me if you're if you're someone who's wearing, like, I don't know if she's going to horribly suck. I don't think she's going to horribly suck. I think she'll do perfectly fine. And also, the game is not that hard. So you have no troubles just picking her up and playing whatever thing you want, buddy. Let me tell you. It's what I do. Um, Forger Mitsuba. A young woman who hails from Hinamoto and has come to study local Albanian cuisine. She learned the potential of outdoor cooking after trying it with friends and now plans to use it so she might return to the family restaurant to glory all right fiend itch ich, what the m fiend ikichimi deals wind damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts bleeding okay grants the user a new dish uh for every 15 hit combo and creates a buff zone that surrounds them for 15 seconds. The buff zone effects will be based on the number of new dishes the user has up to a maximum of 3. 1. Increased skill damage uh, 10%. 2. Increased skill damage by 10%. And critical rate by 10%. 3. Increases skill damage by 10%. Critical rate by 10%. And strength by 5%. This skill will only be used when the user has at least one new dish. And using it will consume all new dishes. Strength 10% is her co-op ability. Chain co-op ability is HP 80% equals water resistance 6%. Abilities bleeding heart equals user strength 10%. Buff the user strength by 10% for 10 seconds upon successfully inflicting an enemy with bleeding. After activating the ability will not activate again for 5 seconds. Freeze resistance 100%. Chef Savvy 2, using Fiend's Banquet, grants the user the Pluckered Mandarish effect. When this effect is active, the user's skill gauge fill rate will be increased by 15%. Their, and their four strike will inflict poison. This effect cannot stack and will be consumed on use. Okay. Um, kind of similar to the what I just got talking about with uh, Pecoron over here. Uh, the princess, I should just keep calling her princess, is that it doesn't seem like she's doing anything different to her element that doesn't already kind of exist. Like, in terms of um, wind support units, there's, like, literally thousands of them. So if you're looking for a wind support unit, um, there are probably better ones you could pick for sure, considering one of them has a mana spiral. So kind of by default, he will always be the best one. Um... It would be actually a real problem if you got power crept by a unit that wasn't mana spiraled, I suppose, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but let's say you don't care about any of that. I don't want to use that dude because I'm not into dudes. I'm into women. I can respect that, and in which case, I think she'll be perfectly fine for what you're looking for. Um, nothing, again, screams as like... It, it does feel like you're kind of jumping through hoops just to get to her, um, her buffs. Um, which is not a hoop that you have to jump with with the other characters. Um, but it does, you know, if you end up liking the character, I don't think it ends up mattering all that much to you. But I definitely feel like it's a, kind of feels like a bit of work to get buffs. Maybe if the buffs were, like, amazing, but it kind of feels like they're, yeah, kind of on par with the other buffs you get. Um, at least that's how I feel. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Again, maybe that damage mod for that skill one is just incredibly insane. And she's one of the best units in the game. We won't know because they don't give us the mods for some of these units. But I kind of doubt it on that one. Uh, but that's her. Uh, next unit, we have Lumere Pandora. A dragon who bears the box of hope. 
which has the power to better the world through spreading an abundance of blessings. She loves nothing more than spending time with her twin sister, who carries the box of calamity. <laughs> and now here's the funny thing before I actually get into what she does. My dog's name is Pandora. So reading her name is making me go like, Pandora, where are you? Stop barking. I'm trying to record. Um, I digress. Okay. So she has Burst of Happiness. Increases the user's strength by 25% and critical rate by 15% for 15 seconds. Light Emissary of the Box of Hope 5. If the user is attuned to light, increases the strength by 20% for every Joyful Radiance stack the user has. The user will be granted 4 Joyful Radiance stacks at the start of quest, and they will be granted an additional stack every time their Strength Defense Elemental... Basically, any time they get a buff, uh, is increased by 1 of their own skills. Joyful Radiance can stack up to 4 times, and 1 stack will be consumed every 20 seconds. So that just means they get 80%? Huh. So it's kind of like they start off with 80% and then from that point on you're in a mission of trying to keep your 80% at all times. Hmm. Hmm. This seems pretty solid to be honest. And I think it's pretty solid because there's not a lot of like uh, the best, some of the best light units currently in the game are all limited. Like, um, Daikakoten, who is, I think, currently the best light dragon, is from New Year's. His banner just went away. No chance in hell you will be able to get him because he only shows up during New Year's banners. And the other one is Galathor. Um, and if you don't have either one of those units, then you're kind of, like, up, up shit creek without a paddle in terms of trying to find the greatest light dragon out there for you. It can actually be kind of tough. I actually kind of wish that they had actually, when they went to go buff a bunch of dragons, that they had actually focused in on some of the lights problems with dragons and then increased it a little bit. Pop Siren is pretty good and she's also free. I didn't mention her, but you know, she's pretty solid. Um, but in general, not the greatest batch of dudes to look for when it comes to light dragons. It is nice that they've made, I think they made Pop Siren a farmable though. Um, I think she could be really good, but only with very specific units, because as it says right here, you have to be the one increasing that specific... You have to be the one giving yourself that buff. Um, here's the thing, but I'm not sure if that also means that if... So let's say you're using a unit that gives a buff to the entire team. Um, if you don't have the dragon and you're buffing someone else, obviously that doesn't work. But what happens if you have the dragon and you're buffing everyone? Does that mean you do get the buff then? Right? I don't know. We'll have to probably find out. I think she's actually pretty solid. I would say she's probably of these three. Again, not knowing any of the damage mods, it would definitely she would probably be um, the, the best unit on this banner. I think. Um, followed by uh, Pekaron Princess. Sorry, I forgot. Um, and Mitsuba here at the bottom. So yeah, that's kind of the collab banner. Um, kind of extremely skippable, if I'm being 100% honest. I am going to be summoning on this, uh, even though I really shouldn't be. Uh, the reason I'm summoning on this banner is because they're all very cute women. Um, it, with the exception of this dragon, who is very clearly a little girl, which in case I'm pretty sure, no, actually I don't know. Leave a comment. Tell me about what you think, but not make it not creepy. <laughs> Try to make it not creepy. Be respectful. Um, I, I really do like like the look of them and stuff, so that's kind of like how I am with the game. If you're someone who's definitely like like Galileanitis completely wiped out all your supplies, dude, don't even worry about it. If you're also someone who summons like, I don't have a lot. I don't have enough for like the, the 300 summons. Well, if you actually wait a bit, you can, in theory get um the princess over here um with a gal with a dream ticket if that's what you really want like it, she's she's very weird in that she's a collab unit that isn't limited so there's always a chance for you to get her when trying to get another unit and if you do never end up getting them then there's always the dream ticket it does cost money um so if you're someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money then i would suggest if you or if you're someone with not a lot of money not a lot of warm might and you badly want this unit, I wish you all the luck in the known universe. That's what I'm saying to you right now. I will never shame you for going for who you want. Know that. You have a friend in me. Other people will come out to you and say, why are you summoning? 
Look at me, bro. Let me, let me, let me, let me. This is why you summon. And with that, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you had a good one. Um, I'll see you guys when the banner comes out. A lot of, a lot of people go to summon videos anymore, I've noticed. And I think it's because Dragalia has really fucked up the summoning system. Um, but if you want to see me make a mistake, then you're welcome to see my summon video when that comes out later. And if I do end up pulling these units, I'll try and make a video of them trying to uh, use them in some manner. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like. It helps me a whole bunch. Uh, more than you know how much it helps me. Um, comment, tell me about how you're feeling. And of course, you can subscribe to me. I'm pretty close to 2,000. If I can get to 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I would be one happy wokey. So, goodbye everyone. Have a good day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.